Hello to everyone. Welcome back to the 1894 podcast. And it was yet another very disappointing day at the office for Bristol City. A really revealing night at Ashton Gate um, as City were taught a footballing lesson by a far superior side with far superior quality and a far superior place style of play, which is very, very effective for them at the moment. Um, it ended up actually at Bristol City 1, sorry, Bristol City 0, Leeds United 1, um, and it was six games, it is six games in the league without a win for City. Um, I am joined, as always, in these episodes uh, for therapy sessions um, by Matisse. Uh, Matisse, how are you doing? Um, because you didn't watch another game, you day tripper. Um, it's 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 really disappointing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, how are you feeling after yesterday? Um, yeah, not great. I unfortunately, yeah, I couldn't watch the game, but I have watched the extended highlights. Um, but yeah, I was a uh, refereeing a match actually. Um, I'm now a qualified one, but yeah, maybe I should go into the championship because I think they they definitely need some new ones uh, in general. But yeah, not happy um right now i feel like we went on that three in the bounce three on the bounce win streak and then it's all kind of gone downhill since um new year's time and yeah like you said no win in no wins in six in the league and one win in nine um including the the cup games um yeah i mean look leeds are a fantastic side um and we saw that last night and they've been on some really good form and I, I've always backed them to get into the two and I think they'll I think they'll still finish um above Southampton I just think they have that quality um and just some of the players names and how Somerville's been playing um this season it was always going to be tough um sold out Ashton Gate as well we've been getting a lot of numbers recently um but yeah yet again no goal we had basically none of the ball um so yeah bit frustrating now um and we're kind of not really turning around our form and then we go back to the fa cup now which can kind of be seen as another distraction from from the league but we're kind of not bringing those performances against um well yeah against other championship sides and now we're slowly drifting away and into that <laughs> mid-table mediocrity again um but yeah yeah not 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 happy yeah i don't think i don't think um many people are after yesterday um the team that played yesterday was this uh, on screen right now. Uh, if you're listening on the audio feed, uh, it is Max in goal, uh, back five of Ross McCrory, Josh Tanner, Rob Dickey, Zach Viner uh, as the back, uh, as the three centre backs, a uh, campering left wing back, Matthew James, Joe Williams as the double pivot in midfield, which we will talk about as well. Jason Knight off the right. Um, we seemingly went to up top when the team used teams came in but as far from to up top um it was tommy conway on the right sorry tommy conway on the, on the left um naki wells up top uh, as as the um main main guy for leeds um do you remember leicester away where i made where i said oh 40 million pounds 40 million pounds y player i'm gonna do the same elan meslier who course cost five million pounds archie gray who's one of the best Young players in the in 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 England at the moment, Joe Rodon, who's on at a Premier League club and is on loan, and has been here before with Swansea and did really well. Ethan Ampadu only cost about ten million pounds, so he's nothing major. Junior Fairpo cost about fifteen million pounds. Ilya Grove cost about ten uh, five million pounds. Glenn Kamara cost about five million pounds. Wilfred Notter, who was linked to the move to Everton, West Ham, etc., etc., throughout the summer, and cost about five million pounds. Um. Jorginho Rutter only cost £35 million. Um, Crescentio Somerville cost a couple of million, to be fair. Um, Patrick Bamford cost about £15 million. So, yeah, basically, it's, it's, we, we've got, it's we, we, we should team. win this. We should win this. Well, this is a disgusting performance. We should easily win this game. That That's the thing, really. I mean, just the squad's worth and the quality that they have, just like Leicester. I mean, when they come down and we'll have a team like that um there's no doubt that they'll be right at the top um especially yeah with parachute payments and everything but yeah they're just the the, the names of the players as well i mean bamford yeah obviously they, they were in the premier league and 
And I think Sam Mills, yeah, well, one of the best players in, in, in the league right now. Um, yeah, more on our formation. Yeah, we've obviously clearly moved to this 3-4-2-1 um, in the last few weeks. We're going to talk about, yeah, James and Williams. And we mentioned it quite a few times on the podcast that they, they're pairing that really should not be going together um, in the midfield. But yeah, brought McCrory back on the right. Still hasn't played a full 90 yet, but obviously still returning um, from injury. And then the back three, the same of yeah, Tanavina Dickey. And then, yeah, putting Naki Wells back up top. He did score midweek, um, which we can, we'll, talk, we'll touch on later against Coventry. Um, but yeah, just, yeah, overall, obviously the lineup, um, we'll get onto the transfers as well, but obviously uh, our newest deadline day signing couldn't um, make today's game. Um, but yeah, just n- nothing really for the attackers um, with, and no chances really throughout the whole game. Another game, I think, well, yeah, one shot on target was was it for for the Robins uh, last night. Just just absolutely nothing from minute one, I thought. Um, look, Leeds are obviously a ridiculously good side with a ridiculously good manager. So they're obviously going to be incredibly hard for us to compete with. But I just felt like there was just nothing offering on offer from us. Um, you see, you know, I don't want to compare, but, you know, Luton in the Premier League, you know, they have an inferior squad to everyone uh, or most teams, but at least they go and literally just compete and, you know, don't have to play football all the time. You can't come against Leicester, Leeds, Ipswich, Southampton and expect to out, you know, ha- have more possession than them. That's... And they expect to win the game. That's something you're not going to dominate them in that expect. You're going to have to compete with them. You're going to have to work hard on them. You're going to have to run more than them. We just didn't do any of that. And we, and sometimes people think, oh, that's just like a mentality thing. No, sometimes you're set up to, in a way to like go and press and have those pressing triggers and um and have you know that sense of go go and be aggressive. Um, I don't think we were set up in the right way with the personnel and in the system. Uh, maybe not in the, like, the lineup, but just generally just didn't have enough pressing triggers. Um, and I thought we had way, we left way too much space between their three players off the front, which is arguably the best three players, best three attacking players in the championship and their midfield, uh, which is again, technically on a superior level to Matty James and Joe Williams. And we just gave them too much space because Matty James and Joe Williams, as much as they're good individual players, as a pivot, you're asking them to run around and deal with Somerville, Notto, Rutter, and then also to deal with uh, Kamara and Gruev. It's like, what, what Matty James can't run, Joe Williams can tackle, but can't really put himself about as much. And it's just, I felt that was really, really daft from Leigh Manning, actually. And when Taylor Garn Hickman came on, we looked like we could deal with it a little bit more. We still got exposed. We could deal look like we could deal with it a little bit more. Yeah, it was it was strange um to why we did that. And personally, I don't know about um everyone else. I I I I've never really liked the the five back. I know we've talked about structure, but I feel like the way we set up can I feel like sometimes it's just a bit messy. I feel like there's a lack of structure and sometimes we can be very exposed. I mean, I know that's down to individual errors. Um it happened against um who was it we were away from home i think it was huddersfield um but chance for somerville was it or not uh somerville 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 um you talking about the way yeah, i think it came through and then and then max made the save yeah it was it was a, yeah. it was a brilliant save but um yeah it came from a, a corner which was yeah very the same and then yeah it's just Poor composure, really. It's just a high press. Somerville nicks it off him, and then he's obviously got the pace to to absolutely fly past him. And then yeah, he tries the dink, but Max O'Leary stayed composed and just suck a hand up, and it was a a good save. But yeah, just in those situations, it's a bit shaky, and it's happened quite a few times. Um, and yeah, we were lucky for that not to go in. Um, in that, in that moment. Uh, yeah, just on that mistake actually by Tanner to let Somerville in. The you, as as I said before, you you can expect you can play try, try to play football, but you've got again you've got to be set up in the right way to do that against these top sides as well. Particularly, you've got to be able to make sure you move the ball, have movement, 
um, out off the ball as well. Um, and yeah, just effectively pass it around, and we just didn't do any of that. Unfortunately, um, we'll talk about the goal then, um, because it is, yeah, it had been coming, to be honest. It had been coming whole of the first half. I don't know how we went in at nil-nil. We were really, really fortunate. Um, and we didn't really offer much in the in the other way. Only Naki Wells had that half chance, I'd say. Uh, apart from that, it was nothing. Uh, and then it's a mistake in midfield, and then Notto's played in. Uh, Dicky, you can blame him if you want. I don't really, I'm not bothered because it's a collective thing for me. Um, where you, in that sort of situation, you're going, well, it, it, you can only take that much pressure, you can only take so much pressure. And then Notto's played in, he's obviously going to out pace Dicky, um, gets him down the left, uh, shoots with his left foot. Max, again, you can blame him if you want, I don't be bothered. Um, and then it's into the net, and yeah, it's just like you can only contain a team with that much attacking quality for that long. Yeah, I, it 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 was just a, a kind of a disappointing goal to concede. I felt like it went through just way too easily. Um, and then obviously, Dicky's not um, an agile defender, so yeah, just one one good touch and he he's opened himself up and yeah i think max just anticipates the the near post finish um so he's kind of just standing there kind of faints to the right and yeah he's kind of got um not a big chance and then yeah not i mean he's a brilliant player so it's only second goal of the season which was um surprising but yeah it it was coming a couple chances in the first half of there ratia as well in the box with a, a really nice um saved by by o'leary and yeah it, it yeah it, just disappointing um really um it it was coming i mean we we, we look back to our 2-1 loss as well i think we put a much better performance in um there and that was a more narrow win but today we were just well last night we were just outclass and you could see that their quality shine and we just really had nothing to give back really we didn't really i mean we're obviously the underdogs but usually i feel like we show we, we put up a fight and we bring the game but today could have been two three nil really um and should have been probably i saw someone mention the fact that we um oh what is it we went we've been away to all three of the new renegade sites haven't we Southampton, we've played leicester and leeds uh we've all played them we've played them all away from home and it's all been it's all been kind of good these performances and we've lost narrowly southampton we should have scored at least twice in that first half leeds it was an open game leeds probably could have scored four and we should have like scored three it was a very open game and leicester it was only one nil and it was a penalty from Vardy, which um but that was yesterday was just completely different different level wasn't it and um i'd, I'd put that down to the fact that they've got better actually uh leeds over the season and the probably become a better side um more used to this Danny Farker system but you know it is what it is um after that Mimetti was the only big chance of the game I'd say from a city perspective there there's a lot of free kicks which oh my god the free kicks were absolutely abysmal the corners were actually terrible uh Naki Wells took the first corner and then Joe Williams started taking them and then uh, TGH started taking them as well so it's just a complete mess over who was taking the corners as yeah, that that was a mess. Um, missing Scott Twine on their set pieces actually, uh, and then Mametti's played in Conway. Conway, weirdly enough, plays on the left. As soon as he's moved up top, drops in uh, to the, help to build up like Manning wants him to. Plays a lovely ball through. I think five minutes into him moving in centrally, Mametti has a chance and he scores. It's almost as if it's like magic. Play Tommy Conway in his best position and he starts doing better. It was a brilliant pass, I have to say. Um, and the weight on it was perfect for Mehmeti to take on his stride. But it's, it's just a disappointing finish in the moment. I think the near post is pretty wide open and if he just slots it there, then could <laughs> nick a point and count ourselves very lucky. But yeah, kind of hits it towards the keeper and... So it's a it's a good save to be fair, but yeah, just well, I, I only shot on target of the game, um, and quite a big chance, but yeah, we missed it there. And be, before that chance as well, they had another 
kind of three on two, three on one situation where Pring lost the ball high up um, in the field. It was the second time that night, and it was Somerville again nicking him. Um, I'm really. I'm going to be honest. I, 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 I'm going to be honest. I don't remember that because the number of times we lost it in our own half, mm-hmm. and to allow them to get into the three on ones or four on threes or something was ridiculous. So I'm going to be honest. I don't know any. I don't know anything like that. But yeah, I remember something at the end where Somerville went in and then Rutter missed the chance. I think or something. But yeah. Yeah, he. I think he, he he knocked it onto Kamara, but it was just a massive touch, and Max O'Leary managed to push it out for a corner. But yeah, they they they, they had endless chances, and um, they got one in the back of the net at the end of the day, and we just did not have enough attacking threat. And um, well, yeah, well, when you have what twenty under thirty percent of the ball, um, yeah, it's not going to be easy. Um, and yeah, that's. Yeah, like we said at the start, now zero wins in six in the league, which is very poor. Um, how many of those are draws? Three? Or yeah. Three. So three points out of a possible eighteen. Um it's not well I record, I don't like it when people say oh three points out of possible eighteen, because you're never gonna win six games in a row, are you? It, so it's like, true, it's, but that's a bit that's a bit pointless. Because no one's gonna get Oh, I don't know. Forty-six. I, don't, I, don't, I can't. I don't know. I can't do forty-six times three. Ninety-two. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, one hundred thirty-eight. I think that's so, something like. No one's going to get that many m- num- number of points in a league, are they? That's just that's a bit silly. I look at it going, okay, three points in six. That's uh, a half. That's one point. One point every two games. Um, and realistically, I want that number flipped around at two points per game. I like that. Um, but half, half a point a game, yeah, that's nowhere near good enough. That's relegation. That's like worst team in championship history form. Um, so yeah, that needs to turn around. Um, apart from that, finally, I just want to say on the Leeds game, we were outclassed by a better side uh, with inferior players, um, and we just did not get anywhere near them. And unfortunately. That shows the gap between us and the top four at the moment. Yeah, and there's quite a long way to go, I'd say, Um, just on our recent form and just our inconsistency in general. I mean, we always have those couple games where we're like, oh, we could really build something here. Something's clicked. And then it's back down to reality. Um, Yeah, we're now seven points off playoffs with Hull in a game in hand. It's just... We've fallen away from that. And I mean, obviously, we're not expecting amazing masses of Im- improvement. But since Manning's arrival, I don't know. I mean, we'll get onto it in a bit. But yeah, it definitely needs to be turned around. But yeah, outclassed, I'd say. And I mean, one, one, one other thing, it was um, nice to see, obviously, the clap for Max and Aaron during the, the first half and the post of. Uh, only cowards um, carry knives. So that, that that was a nice touch and thing from Ashen Gate. So, yeah. Um, but on the game, yeah. Disappointing loss and, yeah, outclassed by a, a top side. Leeds moved into second uh, with that win. Um, we are currently, uh, so all the 3 p.m.s on the Saturday have just been played. Bristol City currently sits 14th. Um, Plymouth have played a game last... Plymouth have played a game less than us, so they could still go above us if they win their game in hand. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, so we could, uh, yeah, so if Plymouth win their game in hand, they could go above us, but at the moment it is still 14th, our favourite position at the moment. Um, so yeah, really, really, really disappointing game. Um, and I want to talk about Liam Manning, actually, um, because. We, I'm still con- utterly convinced, you know, I'm still very convinced this is going to work, but it, that doesn't mean he is exempt from criticism. Um, and just like Nigel, P- we criticised Nigel Pearson when things went wrong, or, he, or we lost a game, uh, or we didn't play well, or something went wrong tactically. We still criticise Nigel Pearson. So we've got to do the same with Liam Manning. That's only fair. Um, despite him being new, despite this, despite this not being his players, Etc. Etc. Injuries, whatever. Bet side. We still, yeah, we've got to be reasonable. Criticise him. Um, I think he got it wrong yesterday. 
Um, I think he got it very wrong with the fact that he played Tommy Conway out. Um, oh, I think it was on the side. It's just bugging me. Was it on the left or was it on the right? I think it was on the left. He played yeah. Tommy Conway yeah. on the left. Yeah. And Nucky Wells, no disrespect to him. He's had a great career, but he's utterly past it at the moment. And I do not get this. I do not get this um, kind of belief that playing Tommy Conway and Naki Wells in a two up top is somehow going to make things better. Um, Tommy Conway doesn't. Tommy Conway's getting used to this system now under Liam Manning, where he's playing as a sole striker and he's dropping in and he's create and he's like helping in the build up. Why should Naki Wells stand in the way of that? And just because he scored a good goal against Coventry, which we'll talk about in a bit, decent goal, quick was finish. What about the fact that he's been ineffective in basically every game before that? Or are you just going to ignore that then? Um, utterly past it, I think. Um, and I'd like to be proven wrong because I think he's a, obviously an unbelievable character on the dressing room. He just he comes across very well. But look, just, 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 just doesn't look, just, just doesn't cut it. And he, I, I, I don't personally believe he's good enough at the moment. He's not, play, he's not playing anywhere near the levels of what we need and what uh, what Liam Manning needs. So the fact that Tommy Conway played on the left, error by Liam Manning. Second error, we've talked about this, the Matty James and Joe Williams double pivot. I've, so, I've said they're not nowhere near agile enough, can't move themselves around the pitch, and we got utterly battered in that area. Um, and Ross McCrory looked tired, looked lethargic, but can't really blame him for that either. Um, but yeah, I thought the whole setup. To be honest, against the side, uh, maybe maybe it was a little bit naive on our part to expect to you know out possess Leeds or you know try and go that try and play it play you know proper football against Leeds. We just got pinned in. It's not like we were incompetent or can't play can't play football. We just got pinned in. We were tactically pinned in uh, by Leeds, and that ultimately is uh, is not good enough. Um, so yeah, criticize we can criticize Manning, but. Um, that doesn't mean he needs to be slated completely or that Nigel Pearson is better, which is ridiculous. This is a ridiculous notion. Um, but yeah, I think he deserves to be criticised. So I think that's fair. Yeah, no manager can make every decision um, perfectly. And I think a lot of fans have been talking about putting Naki up front with, with Conway. And I think it's something, it's an interesting aspect. I think it could be something that could work but if you think about the long-term product and we mentioned Naki as well in the last podcast um yeah he's coming to the end I mean it was a nice finish on on in the midweek but one nice finish in uh, like what half a season now um where we had the Stoke goal it's just not not good enough I mean it fell to him and yeah it was a good goal but I think is his time at Bristol City. I'll, I'll be surprised if he's if he's still here come next season. Um, yeah, like we said, we love the guy, but Conway's getting used to this, and I think that's the future. Um, especially if we bring in another striker, realistically, because if we move to something with two um, up front, we don't really have enough quality. I don't think because it would be Cornick um, starting games and. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that. Um, in terms of, yeah, the double pivot we mentioned already, and I agree. And, and, and in general, I do believe he, it was the right switch. I still think it was at a wrong moment in time. Um, but I think he can definitely improve the squad. Will he be the right man to take us to that next step into the playoff contention and up through to a Wembley player final I'm not sure just yet he's had what eight to 18 games now um still still in the early stages um and we'll have to see where we come end of the season we've had a transfer window we're going to meant we're going to talk about um types of players we've brought in um but yeah dip in form but there's been a lot of positives throughout um well his start as 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 head coach and there's things to work on, but then some games you sit there and wonder what are we doing today and what are these decisions? And um sometimes you wonder. But yeah, I still think he's he's the right man to to take us um forward in that next step. So yeah, people yeah, talking about Nigel Pearson and stuff and 
getting on the back of him already. Yeah, I, 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 I would disagree. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, but I've had exactly that. Um, under Nigel Pearson, we went away to Leicester, um, sat with ten men behind the ball, and um, that didn't get us anything, did it? So, look, it's 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 a tough one to take at the moment. However, it's it's it's. I think it's going to get better eventually, and hopefully that. Um, Hopefully, you know, give him a bit of a free hit till the end of the season. Bit of a pass, take him a table finish. Um, if you can beat Forrest in the FA Cup, brilliant. Uh, if not, win a few more games. Just make sure you're comfortably into the mid-table spots and then go again next season um, with that pre-season, with that style of play fully embedded, with the more players, um, with Max Bird in the team. Um, hopefully, a bit more of a, uh, yeah, improvement. Um, should we talk about the commentary game or do you want to talk about transfers? I think let's talk about transfers because that's been mm, an exciting that's thing on the agenda. Um, that, haven't I? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, obviously it was deadline day a couple of days ago. Um, quite a quiet, in, in general football, it was quite a quiet transfer window, but for Bristol City and and yeah, and us, we, we, we made quite a few deals. Um, it was five in the end, right? Um, including everything so just to, to go years. over yeah yeah so the first one was only a couple of days in we had adam murphy oh um, as an overall okay i thought you meant five overall, days yeah five it was on deadline day all right no 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 yeah yeah uh overall um just to recap yeah so we signed adam murphy from st pat's um just yeah as a more of a, obviously a long-term project and then just so i get in chronological order um and then, well, we signed TGH on permanent deal. That doesn't really count, obviously. Um, and then Scott Twine, shame he's injured now, um, which we haven't mentioned yet. But is it going to be a couple of weeks, did they say? Um, yeah, he should be back. Uh, he'll be, well, he'll be out for our toughest period of the season. But, you know, that's mm. fine. he'll be back, hopefully back for QPR. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that would be a massive bonus. He is on loan. It is not an option to buy, but his contract does end uh, with Burnley in the summer. So perhaps something if he does it. I I, I think so. From what don't, I don't, I'd, I'd highly doubt it. Well, maybe I, as I'm, I'm still talking through the others. Ch 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 check as as I, as I go through the the other couple. I don't know. I feel like I heard somewhere that it did um maybe is next summer and then on 22nd of january yeah we got john josh stokes from uh the non-league uh well it was a buy and then a loan back to uh older shots who looks like a good young prospect just like adam murphy and then two deadline day signings of mabude who was just completely unknown to us as in normally we get kind of a hint of what's coming but we had no idea most of us were expecting a striker, um, but in comes a kind of a right attacking midfielder. Um, uh, Twine's Twine's contract ends in the summer of 2026. <laughs> okay, well, I've got that one wrong. Um, yeah, well, I, I heard, I, yeah, obviously I got that one wrong, but I think I heard somewhere that perhaps a you deal might could be, be potentially it, agreed. It might have been, uh, you might have been talking about Max Bird because his contract ends. Oh yeah, that is true. Yeah, it might be that. And also, I think Adam Murphy's contract. Oh, no, it was that? Yeah, his yeah. Adam, Murphy, Adam yeah. Murphy's contract was up. His contract had expired. Um, yeah, because we tried to get him in the summer, and then we waited. Yeah, until, then yeah, we waited exactly. till now because of the contract expiry. Yeah, and then we paid yeah. compensation um, to some parts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's probably confusion. But I think I read somewhere that there potentially a deal could be agreed, seeing how this. Um, six months goes but yeah Mabude from a mid-table Belgium side Man City Academy as he was young I've seen some clips he looks pretty bright um Scottish international um yeah he seems like a, a good player um on loan with an option to buy um which is good I'm not sure exactly how much that is for but if he provides to be a, um a good player obviously I, I like these options to buys I feel they feel like a low risk situation um, and then he joined uh, you know, kvc 
he he joined KVC Vestalo for one point five million. So I might I suggested probably around in that region because mm. of the um because of that. Uh, well, I mean, he's only played three game. games for for Westerlo, which is well strange. Yeah, yeah. So I'd I'd suggest they probably want to recoup most of that money. So I'd suggest it probably in that one point five or one point three million region ish. Yeah. But yeah, any any player who's played for uh Academy for, for Man City uh, is pretty promising because they they bring out obviously a lot of good products. Um and also like the fact that we've kind of used the um foreign market a bit. And um even though he is obviously originally from the Man City Academy and from the UK, um well I, the the last one was Bajic and Masengo probably from foreign clubs in, in, in France. But I think it's nice that we're kind of reaching our scouting network a bit a bit further so obviously we hope it pays off and he's also available for nottingham forest because it's obviously not cup tied or anything and then finally the one you mentioned max bird um who was another buy and then loan back so he'll be there in the summer so we've got stokes and max bird uh ready to come in ready for our squad next season and it's January, but it looks promising, and I'd say it's a very successful window. Um, and I'm 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 really happy about how it turned out. We've got some young players and some really good additions. Um, I just want to say, well, two kind of, well, one lonely Max Bird got an assist for Derby today. Uh, in their one 0 win at Charlton, um, and another kind of lonely, but he's not going to be here next season. Andy Vyman uh, scored for West Brom uh, oh, as they beat see. as they beat a Birmingham one nil uh, late on, and of course, of course, Andy Vyman scored against Birmingham. Of course, he did. Ex Villa boy, um, yeah, good for him, good for Andy. Um, yeah, I still love him. So yeah, good to see, good to see him doing well at West Brom. Apparently, he's impressed in the two games he's played there. So good, good on him. Um, that- yeah, the saw Max Bird then because I think that's the big deal of the of the of the uh of the deadline day uh maybe not so much impact this season but certainly going to be impactful next season and i think he's an unbelievable footballer. i've been kind of going on about max bird on my channel for a while um i actually adore him uh think he's a brilliant player left-footed he's just so elegant he's just so classy um he reminds me a little bit of adam morton who's gone and joined crystal palace for 25 million pounds or something um this this January, so very very good left foot wizard really on the ball um, defensive midfielder. So he has got that bite in him. He's played under Paul Warren, um, so he has got that defensive mouse about him. But just generally a fantastic footballer um, and someone that hopefully will take over the reins from Matty James um, maybe in the summer. You're muted. Yeah, that's rookie my bad. Mistake. Uh, rookie, rookie mistake. mistake. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. Obviously, Matty's contract ends in the summer, so um, it's good to bring in two kind of midfield replacements. Um, and yeah, good additions. Do you think Matty James will will, will get an extension? Or do you think his times his times definitely over? Uh, well, we can't. Well, Joe Williams is definitely going to play in the in midfield. Uh, and I don't think Joe Williams and Matthew James work in the same midfield. Yeah. So I'd say probably gone in the summer. Yeah, especially with our new signings as well. It it does look like it. Um and I'd and yeah. maybe and maybe we bring in one more in one more midfielder in the summer. I think that might mm. be on the list as well. Do you think we'll we'll, we'll look at a striker, an out and out to well, that's Bad. that's 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 for another podcast. But I think we might look at somewhere in, in summer in midfield. I might. I think we might. Mm, yeah, it would be important. But our our squad depth, I've, I've kind of realised, is without injuries, is quite large now. Um, with our new with our new like low knees and everything, like we have quite a few options. Um, especially in the attacking region now with Twine and Mabude. Um, mm. So yeah, be interested to see how we use it. And it kind of seems like Cornick's just not going to get any minutes really um, for the rest of the season. Well, it seems like it. But um, yeah, on Andy, happy for him. I'm going to see. I'm going to try and watch that goal. Um, but obviously, yeah, it's a 
working loan, I guess. I mean, that's what they wanted him to do, but be a little bit of an impact. And yeah, he came off the bench, um, which is nice to see. Um, other transfer kind of news, I mean, nothing nothing much really to well to say on that a lot of our fan base a lot of fan base a lot of our fan base wanted keith him all um he's gone to hip switch hasn't he uh and then he is he's got two today actually he came on at half time i think might have been half time a little bit over half time he scored twice at Ipswich as they lost three two at preston um yeah the max bird thing came about quite late on didn't it uh on deadline day mm. we were kind of oh be ray and boudet for go at him um uh yeah looks like an interesting interesting addition um hopefully hopefully he's gonna hopefully he's gonna add something as in uh, he's he described himself in his interview as a technically gifted like a pretty that's a bit paraphrasing but you know quite durably technically gifted um hopefully he can hopefully he's like an upgrade on Arnis a little bit in terms of taking players on adding a little bit extra to that uh, front three um, and yeah, hopefully he links up well with Tommy Conway and we'll see how he gets on as well because it'll be interesting to see how he uh, acclimatises to the championship. Um, yeah, I think that's about it in terms of transfers. Um, she will talk about Coventry then, shall we? Um, I think that, that well, that one, if, if we're going to be really quick about it, was a very entertaining game, uh, but a game ultimately we should have probably hung on and got three points in. Yeah, I I do think it was still quite a disappointing p- performance. I say I didn't think we were that great, and I know we scored two goals, but especially going forward, I just felt like we didn't really have that final pass um, and attacking threat. And it was a game I don't know. I feel like we lacked control um, over. I mean, yeah, their two goals, Sakamoto. Um, and then, yeah, we obviously had that equalised just before half time, which was a brilliant ball um, by Tilagana Hickman. Then, yeah, Naki Wells playing. I mean, he started the match as well um, for rotation. And yeah, we mentioned him. I mean, yeah, it was a good finish. And um, it obviously, I obviously at, at the time we all thought that was that was the winner. Um, and I was extremely happy for him um, after his kind of yeah goal. Very good finish um, as well. Yeah, it was it was nice. Um, and he took it down well. Um, and it's, but yeah, he hasn't scored a goal in, in quite a while. So yeah, very happy for him. His last game, his last goal. Go home, yeah. Home, yeah. And he was yeah he, he was given that, but it was still a good finish there. I don't I don't want to remember that game specifically. I remember that pretty vividly. Um, but yeah, I think it was obviously a t- tough side as well. We we have to remember Coventry. I mean, they did lose today against Norwich, um, but they were in flying form and going away from home um, wasn't going to be easy. So, yeah, but again, lack of concentration and then comes off Max O'Leary, pushed right in front of Sims on a plate just to tap it home, which was a quite a disappointing goal to concede. Um, let him take the shot and then obviously Dickie's got I feel like just a bit of lack of awareness, but it all comes pretty quickly. Um, and then, yeah, he's in behind and yeah, we were pretty clueless there, but yeah, it's a, it's a point away from it. I'm mean, going into the, going into that game. We, we would have taken a point, but during that, I felt like any team could have nicked it, but I felt like we, we should have, we should have held on and, and just, yeah, and, and won that game really. Um, if I'm being honest, I would have taken one point of Coventry Leeds, um, but it's just the performance at uh, at, at Ashingate against Leeds, which is really frustrating. Really frustrating. Um, thought we were thought we were really. I thought we were quite good for the opening thirty minutes. Um, but as has been the theme, we just haven't been able to take our chances, um, and couldn't just couldn't couldn't score. And that led to Sakamoto scoring. After that, we dug in. Um, had to control them for a little bit, and then we then we hit back with Dicky at the end of the half, didn't we? Um, and then we I thought we played controlled Coventry to a certain extent. We didn't, we weren't terrible, but we weren't really good either. Uh, and then we, um, yeah, then we 
that we scored with Naki Wells. Good finish, as I said, good finish. Um, and then, yeah, the Sims equaliser comes comes a little bit out of nothing. But yeah, Coventry would probably argue they should have possibly kicked on from 2 2 with the time after that. Uh, but we had a really good chance at the end with, um, didn't we, where Collins made a save mm. for Coventry, and that was a massive save. Um, you can blame Bax if you want, but I thought he kept us in it yesterday uh, against Leeds. Was it yesterday? Yes. Against Leeds, I thought we were really good. Yeah. I thought, he was really, I thought he was really good. Um and yeah, kept it kept it kept it kind of respectable at one nil. Um but yeah, I can you can you can you can you can say whatever you want about Max. I think he's fairly consistently I think he's decent for us consistent on a consistent basis. Um we think I, he can pull we and if we were gonna improve on Max, it's gonna take a hell of a lot of money to do so as well. That that that's that's what I mean. I think people put like replacing Max too high on on our priority list, and it's not one of our biggest problems right now. And I think in in lots of recent games, he's he's just been a brilliant shot stopper in general. And obviously, other parts of his game needs working on. But you bring someone new in, and it could all go all wrong. Um, but I think I think he's a he's a pretty solid keeper right now for us. And um, I think yeah, obviously he played brilliantly last night. Um, and he did a good job on that Coventry chance at the end. I thought, oh, if Harry Cornick can can nick it right at the end again to take the lead. Um, it's like kind of three deflections, I think, in one, and keeper managed to keep it out. Um, yeah, so this week, one point, um, our two games. And yeah, like you said, I think going into it, we weren't expecting much against Leeds, but it's kind of... Just the man of the performance, great. Right? The man of the performance yeah. is really, really poor in the way we, way we put ourselves mm. about against the top side. Exactly, and just recent form in general, I feel like yeah, mood's not too amazing right now. But now we have Nottingham Forest away, which will be a tough game. And we mentioned it before; was a big opportunity to go and win it at home in the with that, in the first um, attempt and missed chances cost us. And now we have to go away for the replay. Um, so yeah, I mean, we'll move on to the preview in a minute but if we can somehow win that and that next home draw will be will be something special i think it's one of the the, the, what, the last thing now we have for this season to um to kind of cheer about um because it looks like a another 14th position please let's talk about the forest game then away from home um yeah it's an opportunity hopefully we know well we normally you know, bring ourselves up for these sorts of games um, where, you know, to mar- far superior opposition, Premier League opposition, we normally time to turn up. We might lose, but we normally put ourselves, you know, about well and put paint ourselves in a good light. But with the fixture schedule um, and the fact that West Ham went to a replay and now this has gone to a replay as well and the championship fixture congestion, there is already, yeah, I just feel like it's a game we don't need at the moment. Um, and I know if we win, it would be like, oh, everything's all right again, but the league form isn't great. Um, and the yeah, fixture congestion is just absolutely massive at the moment. Yeah. I mean, when we look at it, we'll have this midweek and then Middlesbrough away, Southampton at home um, on a Tuesday night. And then we have a couple of games of, of QPR at home and Wednesday away. Um, with a week apart, um, but it doesn't really get too much easier. We have Ipswich as well coming up in March. So, yeah, like you said, these replays, and obviously it brings some FA Cup magic, um, and hopefully we can go on a little run. I mean, Nottingham Forest, I feel like they're one of the more beatable teams, um, not in amazing form. They lost against Arsenal, but, I mean, you can't really get too fussed about that. I mean, West Ham did beat Arsenal, but... Yeah, they face um the Bournemouth of Alex Scott, Anton Semenya and Lloyd Kelly. Um, no, what? No one. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, they face them tomorrow. So get a day's um, well, no, two days then because we did play on the Friday night. Um, less rest. So yeah, we have to be prepared for the Wednesday night. We do still get quite a few days. So hopefully we just go out there and just put out all really. Um, not as many away fans as that West Ham game at the london stadium only about 2.8 thousand seats i think or something like that still um, still a very good 
it, out, it, outing for you know a uh, was it Wednesday night? Is it Wednesday it, it's, night? Tuesday night? It's a Wednesday night, quite far away. Is has it sold out though? No, I don't think so. Not yet. Not yet. No, but, no it's, it, I don't think it's sold out yet. But yeah, it's still a very good showing. Yeah, for the it, it's very Im- impressive for for a midweek game. Um. Of course. Um, and hopefully, we can show them something as well. What would your team be then? Yeah. Let's talk about that. What would your team be? Because I think some rotation is going to have to be needed. And, and, and. Yeah. Camp ring suspended. Taylor Garden Hickman suspended. Ooh, ooh, Taylor Garden Hickman, why? Did he get a yellow? Two yellows, yeah. Oh, God, the replay's up. <laughs> Not out um, with those yellow cards. Joe Williams is still. A... Oh, no, because he, he missed the. He's fine. Answer, he'll, be, yeah. he'll be fine. But there yeah, will be so um, no, no, no Scott Twine. Well, is, no Mark Sykes. Is is um I forgot his name now. Um Hayden Roberts. Ray, um oh Hayden Roberts. Yeah, he should Hayden be, Roberts. He'll is be it, starting. He's be starting. he's he's fit because he's he's been fit, he's been on the bench. He's so yeah, I'd he, say he, yeah, he will, be, he will be starting, yeah, hopefully. So I'd say Obviously, the back three the same, and then probably McCrory off the right, um, Roberts off the left, and then middle of Joe Williams and Matty James. No, um, of course not. Uh, Joe Williams and Matty James. He's, he's going to put Matty James. I think he will. Well, he has he no will option, do that. Unless he. I don't know. Knight probably can't. He can't move that far back in this system. Um, so he's probably has no choice well, he unless he switches that, things up. He, he he could move Knight back in, or we switch the Knight. formation up again. Or 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 we, he might put Knight in with Williams, and then have uh, Mamati and Bell, something like that. Um, or Cornick, we want to throw something in there. But Bell can play yeah. on the left, on the right. Sorry. Uh, Mometti on the left, or something like that, and then Conway up top, or Wells up top. I'd put, yeah, I'd put Knight in the midfield and then Conway up top, and then the two two in the middle, Bell, Mometti. Yeah, Bell, Mometti. It'd be a statement if he started Mabude straight off the bat. No. Nah. Um, oh, no, he's not cocked tight either, is he? Yeah, he can. Yeah. I think, I think he. Why not? Just like just start starting first game Premier League FA Cup opposition. It'd be funny. It, 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 I don't know. I mean, as he has had enough times, even like learn Sam Bell's name, he won't even know what to say on the pitch when he's asking. They had him. enough time to learn his name. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe potentially. I think he'll definitely appear um, in the second half if he's not starting. Um, but why not? I'd say if I if I if I could choose, I'd say um Annis. Mm, no, I'd say Bell and Mabude. I'd say Bell and Mabude, and I'd I'd I feel like Annis and Mabude have kind of similar traits, I'd say. And then I'd leave Conway up top. So you'd start Mabude then? Yeah, why not? Okay, I think fair. just at this rate, just with and Hayden Roberts hasn't Stop played in what? God no. no. Hasn't played in a long time. Uh, all right then. Uh, I'd go with Max and go obviously McCrory, same back three. Uh, Roberts left wing back. Um, I'd go Knight and Williams in midfield. I would go Sam Bell and Mametti off the off, off the front, and I would go Tommy Conway up top. And I do think um, Knight is far more effective. In deeper, deeper back, and um, far more effective in that number eight kind of position. So yeah, I'd go with that. Um, score prediction then for this one, because yeah, I could not care. You're muted again. You're muted again. This is this is really really poor from you. No, no, no. Yeah, that is that is uh twice in a row. This is, this um. Is it's, it's not good enough, but not as unprofessional as we'll be um, on Wednesday night. I think we're going to go out there, and I think we're going to... I mean, I'm always going to back us to, to somehow to somehow gain something. Um, 
Look, I think it'll be another close game. They're obviously going to try and be the more controlling side because we did dominate a lot of that first fixture at home. But I still think we have enough in us to, to hold out in, in this FA Cup game. Um, I reckon I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. Penalties. We do not need extra time and, nine, and penalties. And we do, we, we don't do need it. We don't want it. it. We don't... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I say one one in the ninety, thirty minutes extra time of nothing, and then hold on till penalties and and we nick it with a um, Max O'Leary penalty because it goes for for that long. <laughs> and he slots it into the top right like a Maguire esque penalty, and then runs off to the way end. That's that's my fairy tale of the story. It's gonna happen. I'm going five nil Forest. <laughs> I predicted us to win against West Ham as well. One 0 I said it. It's going to happen. No, I'll go. I'll go three one to Nottingham Forest. I'll go three one okay. to Forest. Um, yeah, I think they'll be a little bit more up for it. Um, not up. No, no. no Look, no. if they'll be a little bit more too standard of what we expect from a Premier League side, I think we'll be up for it. But we'll just get down on quality, and they'll have our one year back, Gibbs White back. Uh, no, but well, yeah, Gib- Gibbs White played against Arsenal, but. Maybe Alex Cock can do us a favor, injure injure him. Um, just take out, too. please, mate. <laughs> please. Um, yeah, no, nah, that won't happen. Um, and yeah, we might be in there for a bit of a pasting, but it is what it is. Um, that is it for me. For me. Um, it has been a quite terrible weekend for for myself. We slip into our lovely position. The favorite position of 14,000 pieces. So, um, Alex Scott is now somehow the best footballer on, on planet Earth. Everyone's raving, everyone's raving about him. Um, although, actually, no, Max Bird did sign. I'm quite excited about that. He scored, scored, uh, got a good assist for Derby. Um, quite happy to see you like Max Bird. Bird. I can tell you, oh, you love Max Bird. You're gonna get a shirt before he even like arrives at Ashton Games. I just, not, I just love the man. He's so, I, I, I've always. When we were linked, I think when we were linked with uh, Jason Knight, I th- I think I saw an article from like uh, the Athletic or something. It said Bristol City have made a move for Derby midfielder, and I didn't see Jason Knight, and I immediately went, "Oh my god, we're going to get Max Bird! Oh my god, we're going to get Max Bird!" I clicked on it, and then when Jason Knight went, oh. "I'm still happy for it," obviously, I'm still happy. Oh, was, Jason like, Knight. Max Bird! I was like, "Oh, it's not Max Bird." Now we've gone and signed Max Bird and Jason Knight. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's good. Uh, he's got an assist for. To Derby, and hopefully, I'm, 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 I'm excited for Mabude. I have to say, I feel like he could bring some, something. He just seems like an exciting player. But I hope he has a finishing product as well. Um, I am because absolutely bricking it if he doesn't. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we'll, we'll we'll have to see on that. Obviously, in other news, I mean, we were talking about Luton earlier as well. I, I've said from the start, and I've told my friends, I think they're gonna stay up. Um. They just got a four four result. Closer to that answer, you know. Yeah. Um, they are getting uh they, they got a four four result away at Newcastle, which was in a they crazy game. That. They, 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 they should have won that as well. And um their form has been really good. Um and I, I, I know they're just gonna grind out the home results and I think they're gonna summer manage it. Yeah, provided they were lucky with that Everton deduction, but no, they they're even ahead of Forest. Um, so I, I don't know. I say they go and do it. I mean, it was no one thought they would, but I don't know. I feel like it would be quite a nice story. It's it's good to see, isn't it? It's just someone going against some team yeah. going against the odds. So yeah, very good to see. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that is it though from from us. Um, thank you very much for tuning in. If you've been listening on uh, on podcast, uh, please leave, leave us a five star review on Spotify. If you can, that'll be very uh, dearly appreciated. If you're on YouTube, you know what to do. Hit the like if you haven't already. Subscribe to the 1894 podcast. Hit that red button and support us as well. Helps the algorithm and all that, and um, hopefully gets more British City fans tuning into these podcast shows. Um, we will be back uh, soon. I don't know when. Maybe after Borough. Yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll figure it out. Probably after Forest of Barrow.
after Forest Day. But we, something will we will be back. We will be back um, for that. And I can't wait to play Middlesbrough because I've got, I've got, uh, I've got one of my mates um, who's still going on about the Finazaz thing. So I would, in the words of Kevin Keegan, I would love it if we beat them. But yeah, no disrespect to any, any other Middlesbrough fans. They're, they're all nice. They're all nice on T side, but. Just, just to rub it in his face would be nice. Um, yeah, I didn't stop after the previous home game, but that's not important at all. Um, thank you very much. Um, and yeah, I, we will catch you all later very soon. Thank you very much for tuning in. Cheers. Bye.